Hi everyone, I'm uh, Till and this is Yufei. Hi guys. Um, so we're from the delivery engineering team at Redbubble. And so today we're going to talk to you about our adventure of uh, finding a better Docker Paz. So before we actually start our journey, I just want to talk about why we actually started this. So as delivery engineering, uh, we want to provide a reliable platform that enables other teams to uh, deliver business value fast. And uh, initially we, I guess we spent a lot of investment on, um, on Tudem and which now becomes Docker Cloud. So kind of interested, so as many people use Docker Cloud? Yes, I know you have. All right, well, um, so initially we, um, I guess we didn't uh, battle test Docker Cloud or Tudem that, that well. And what happened is we started releasing some production applications into Docker Cloud. And straight away we kind of found some major bugs uh, with Docker Cloud. So what happens is when we actually release new nodes in Docker Cloud, it actually doesn't pick up those new nodes <laughs> at all. So recently uh, for Black Friday sales, what we actually did was we uh, had to scale up one of our applications from two nodes to eight. And what happened was one of the nodes actually cycled itself and um, the other six nodes kind of spun up, but Docker Cloud didn't pick up any of them. So it went from two nodes down to one. So uh, what we had to do was we had to manually go and restart those services, which kind of caused a lot of downtime as well. So for us, there, there wasn't that much confidence in Docker Cloud. We kind of talked to them like, you know, there's this major problem with your services. And they kind of responded back with, hey, we know about it and we'll fix it sometime in the future. <laughs> so for us, it's, it's like no confidence. So we wanted to go and find something better. And so what does better look for us? Well, we want something that's resilient. So if a node does happen to go down, we want to make sure any traffic that's kind of going to those kind of services to redirect to the other nodes and a new node to be spun up and the application to be deployed to those new nodes. We want to be easily scalable, so we can scale up or down depending on the traffic that's there. Uh, we want to make sure it's secure. We don't want to expose any of our, our secrets in plain text or anything like that. Um, we already have uh, services like RDS and S3, so we make sure that we're able to connect to those services quite easily as well. And of course, zero downtime deployment, we kind of need that for any production apps these days. Um, so for, for those kind of requirements, we had a look at four different services that are available. Uh, we had a look at DCOS, uh, Convox on ECS, Kubernetes, and Rancher. So the reasons behind why we chose this for is basically, you know, we had good things about it in the community. We know that it fulfills some or most of the requirements that we require. And you know, some of our, some uh, colleagues in our team have worked with it before. So yeah, we decided to give these four a go. Yeah, so talking about round one of spiking, so round one we're basically looking at how easy it is to deploy a uh, stateful web app with the database onto each of this platform. So just get a general feeling in terms of how easy to follow the documentation, whether the uh, CLI tooling is friendly. So we want to quickly narrow down the list from four to two to, to do some further analysis. So uh, what we're looking at first is Rancher. And uh, we actually like Rancher quite a lot because it's got a very similar Docker Compose ally uh, deployment artifact. So it's very easy to follow. The learning curve is not as steep as the other candidates. and. Uh, what is good about Rancher is that it doesn't have any opinions um, on like what sort of infrastructure it needs to be running on. So it's got an image for the server, it's got an image for the workers, it's very easy to spin it up just by following their, their uh, getting start guide. So which means we can easily integrate Rancher into our existing AWS VPC, which is a good thing. And uh, looks like it does zero downtime deployment out of the box, so which is a Big plus, um, and it has a lot of uh, third, pl third, third party plugins. For example, Prometheus for container monitoring, and uh, Lostash for log aggregating, which is a, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, cons is pretty much it doesn't do secret management of the box, but we don't think it's a huge issue for us because we can just get away with uh, running, um, like using KMS to do the secret encryption, decryption. So. We actually thought Rancher is a pretty good candidate after the first round of experiment, experimentation. 
So coming next to DCOS. Uh, I haven't heard about DC DCOS before, like all this experiment, but it's a big thing. It contains a lot of service, uh, like Jenkins, whatever the thing you can think of. But the thing we're actually interested in is, in is called Marathon, which is a service that specializes in running long uh, running jobs, in this case for application. So this is the one we're actually looking at for Marathon. Installation of Marathon is very easy. Uh, the install installation documents is awesome. So in fact, it, you can actually just one click and it just spin up the whole CloudFormation stack by itself. So if you were to use that CloudFormation stack that gets created automatically, it's actually really awesome. It's got uh, the master and slave spread across multiple availability zone and it's got different subnets, so it's very production ready. And but uh, the thing is, because it's got a lot of moving, a uh, lot of moving pieces uh, on the low level components, um, it's going to be difficult for us if you want to like build our own cluster into our own VPC. Uh, yeah, that that that's one of the cons we don't like, is we have no idea how difficult it would be if we want to use our existing uh, VPC and subnets, all the things we currently have in AWS. So. Yeah, coming back to the pros, uh, another good thing about DCOS Marathon is that it supports single sign-on, so uh, both Google and GitHub, um, that's awesome. And it's backed by MinSource, which uh, has a really good reputation in terms of orchestrating all this distributed application. Uh, another thing we don't like about uh, Marathon is that it's kind of difficult to run those um, job, like uh, for example, like a database migration in Rails, we just want to like run it for once, and then we don't want to contain the hand around. So it's difficult to do that because it doesn't provide like a configuration for us to pull image from a Docker registry because it doesn't allow you to provide a credential stuff like that. Uh, and it's very hard to trace what's currently happening in terms of a deployment. Uh, rather than you know you want to know uh, like a log log trace of what the what a deployment looks like, but this one doesn't show you anything except you know oh it's currently deploying, and so it, it's that that's one of the drawback. But overall, it's looking pretty promising. It, the resilience is pretty good in the first ex, uh, ex, experimentation. So yeah, I'll hand it back to Patel to talk about Kubernetes. So yeah, Kubernetes. So <coughs> I'm sure all of you pretty much heard about Kubernetes. Um, it does provide basically all the functional that we need out of the box. So I believe, and um, the CLI tooling for it is quite nifty as well. So you're able to query the the actual applications that are running, the nodes that are active. You can query the logs uh, that are um, within the container as well. It's very very easy to use. Uh, but for us, we the problem we had was the initial installation and the documentation itself. So we did a manual installation instead of doing a kube AWS install. And we kept getting uh, stalled in certain points, and we had to go through the documentation certain points and try to figure it out. And uh, on some occasions, we didn't have to go to the GitHub repository and search what we needed. And uh, when we actually did find that information, there's a huge amount. There's actually a great resource of information in the GitHub repo, if you can find it. Um, but um, yeah, so that's, that was, so we left with a bit of mixed feelings about Kubernetes. Um, just because of that, those kind of issues. And um, the last one we looked at is Convox on ECS. Um, so CLI tooling for it's quite quite easy to use, and since it's part of ECS, it's it's you know tightly integrated with AWS. Um, the issues we kind of had with it is that uh, it integrates with our VPC, but it creates its own subnets. So for us, we have a standard uh, set of subnets that we kind of use and manage. And when every cluster is going to create subnets, that's going to create havoc for us to manage. So that would be an annoyance. There was a couple of two weird things with Convox as well. Um, if you're running, um, yeah, if, if, you're, if your Docker process tends to die, which sometimes happens with OSX, um, it'll actually leave your, like your sockets open with the Convox CLI. So you have to manually go and kill those off. And um, the CLI tooling and the actual UI don't actually reflect each other that well either. So if you were to go to CLI and create yourself a stack, 
then you have a look at the UI, you won't actually see that stack at all. You have to manually go and, and create a stack itself, and you can then see both the stacks showing up. It's completely weird. So um, out of those four, we uh, decided to use that to two. So we could say goodbye to, sadly say goodbye to Kubernetes and Conox. Uh, Kubernetes just because it was just too hard to get set up. Um, and for Conmox, just the fact that um, it's had you know those couple of issues with it. So with Branch and DCOS, we had you know pretty happy feelings about it, and um, we thought that we can go a bit further with those ones. Yeah. So here we go, round two. So in round two, what we're going to do is to deploy the web app again, but this time we're going to uh, deploy into our existing VPC, trying to because that's what our production environment looks like. We're going to also testing out their zero downtime deployment uh, under load. Uh, yeah, so, and also have a feel about their single sign on, just play, play around all the other features like logging and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, here we go. This is the result. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so before I get back to why we don't like both of those, I have to say that both Rancher and DCOS is uh, are much better than Docker Cloud, at least when we. Um, Killed a node in SG, and SG spin out a new node. Both of the uh, platform will be able to follow. So always have like X number of container running in production, so that we don't, like we don't we wouldn't have the production issue if we were use, using those two candidates straight away. So, uh, but it's still not as shiny uh, as we want to be our next generation of Docker pass. Uh, namely for Rancher, is because um, we thought. Zero downtime deployments out of the box, but it doesn't work. So, uh, why it doesn't work? Because it doesn't respect the health chat. So, if you put a health chat on ASG, and uh, so well, what the zero downtime deployment does is that it will kill the old node before the new node become healthy. So, it doesn't respect the health chat. So, uh, the rancher node, like the support team, realizes an issue, but again, they said they will fix it when they fix it. So, yeah, we just don't have too much of confidence like, with rancher after that. And for DCOS Marathon, um, yeah, as we expected, it's very difficult for us to build it in our own VPC because there's too many moving pieces. It's too low level, like the team doesn't have enough knowledge or enough time to investigate any, anything further. So we feel like, uh, okay, so we're out of option now. What do we do now? Right, um, okay, so we have an internal discussion. What do we do now? We're gonna keep count and try Kubernetes again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the so the reason being that like we have a discussion. Uh, so the team was saying that well, harder to set up initially probably is gonna be better than harder to manage in the long run. We we have heard like a lot of companies, a lot of uh, like coworkers from like ThoughtWorks, Fairfax. Uh, They've been using Kubernetes in their production for a year, and they thought that Kubernetes is awesome, like no issue. And okay, then we decided to give it a go. Like uh, we will spend more time trying to set it up in our VPC, and we know it's got full set of features. Its resiliency is awesome, and it's got multiple hosting options, Google and AWS. And yeah, so Till is going to talk about what we're working on. Um, yeah, so we looked at two of the hosting solutions for Kubernetes. Uh, the first one is AWS. And for us, we invest a lot of time in our infrastructure in AWS. So it's pretty much a given to try AWS. And um, you know, it, it kind of hooks up with our existing services like RDS or S3. And uh, we also have our solar services on AWS as well. So the latency between calling those services is very minimal. Um, we, have a, we had a look at Google. It was <laughs> A complete breeze to get Kubernetes going up on uh, Google Container Engine. Um, but for us, the issue is we have all these services in AWS, and so we need a way to try and securely access those services with minimal latency. And so we had a look at, um, uh, had a thing of what our latency would be like from uh, Google to our solar services in AWS, and it looked like about 50% extra in uh, round trip time. So for us, um, AWS was the way to go. So our uh, actual final analysis of Kubernetes. So zero downtime deployments were trivial. All you had to do is pretty much specify rolling updates on your specification, and Kubernetes does the rest. It's easy as that. 
and uh, resilience is great. You can shoot down nodes, it's able to spin those up uh, quite quickly and able to move those pods up to the um, old, old nodes or new nodes quite easily. The scheduling rules are quite easy as well. Um, so you can configure them uh, if you want to, but by default, it will actually put your pods across all the nodes available. So you get um, AV for free, I guess, in that, in that sense. Uh, we also looked at making sure the controllers were um, AZ as well. So made, we had spun up three controllers in different um, availability zones, um, just to test that out. Um, but in the end, it's still not that easy to set up, but we feel like it'll, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be probably worth it in the long run for us anyway. So where are we right now? So we finished all um, those investigations about three weeks ago, so it's kind of brand new for us. But um, we at the moment productionizing our Kubernetes cluster but one of the main things uh, we are doing is we, we're working very closely with our teams. So one team in particular, we got early feedback with them uh, to test out uh, if this is right for them, how it kind of works, and we opened up to a lot of the other teams as well to try it out in their staging environments and give us feedback as much as possible. So in the meantime, uh, we looked at how we can, say, back up the Kubernetes uh, services. So we have a scheduled, uh, scheduled job running which will uh, daily back it up, grab all the configurations and put in S3. Um, we looked at how the scheduling kind of works as well, um, see if, uh, if it needed any tweaking, but kind of went with the default uh, for that. Uh, we're still in the process of making sure uh, we have a good way of uh, logging things in our containers, and uh, we're still looking at monitoring as well. So there's still a fair few things that are left to do, but hopefully, yeah, we'll get there soon. Okay, I think that's you. it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Questions? Did you look at um, EC2 container service or Azure container service or anything? Uh, we looked at, I think, we originally looked at yeah, ECS, I think what yeah. you're saying. But we put Convox on top of that because it's basically easy to manage with the ECS. But we didn't test ECS directly, um, just because the was supposed to be easily manageable and just gave us more headaches at the end. So we kind of just closed that, closed, closed that loop quite quickly. Uh, we're still looking at the monitoring stuff, so we haven't really uh, done any discovery pieces on that yet. Um, we're, yeah, we'll, we've still got research on that and we'll probably come back to it later. Yeah. But it's still uh, something that yeah, we, we need to do before we actually uh, put it into production. Yeah. Okay. Um, with uh, Docker, we're finding that Docker itself is probably uh, introducing a lot of mechanisms to make or promise I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't have that much experience uh, in that. It's a ballsy move you make. It is. It's a. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big move for us. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I guess initially we we spend a lot of time researching about where we want to go as a team and what we want to support as well. Um, just because of that initial reasons of making sure that teams are able to. I guess support themselves in a way. So we, we bring the tooling for them and they can support it. So hopefully with Kubernetes, we can provide that tooling for them in the end um, and provide like that, that, that initial support and knowledge as well to those things. Andrew told us that Docker Swan is not production ready, so that's right. <laughs> a lot of companies are actually doing their own uh, scripts, okay, to do what you guys may be trying to do. You must have looked at that. Um, what kind of scripts do you mean as in? Orchestration. Uh, Compose, for example. Yeah, we looked at Compose. I think uh, like uh, DCOS is a version of kind of like Compose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not sure. So, well, yeah, we, we sort of looked at a bit like Compose, but 
<laughs> still is, yeah, like the, the number of features that Kubernetes provides out of the box is much more vast than anything else that kind of provides. The, the box. It's, it's basically the zero downtime deployment is amazing. Like everything else we tried, um, did not provide that out of the box at all. Even though they claim it, they still did not do it. And uh, a lot of things that we did like um, probe Kubernetes on, it did quite well on. <coughs> there are still some things, um, so if we were doing upgrades on Kubernetes cluster, there's still some downtime. So at the moment we're looking at how we can reduce that. We have a shutdown service, so it'll drain all those pods on those nodes and some the new nodes. So there are ways to get around some of those issues, but as a complete feature set, it's much more better than some of those solutions in, in the scripted. Sorry, can you speak louder in your, in your, in your mix? Docker data center. Uh, what's a Docker data setup? Yeah. Sorry, I don't think I understand the question. Yeah. So, we're Docker Yeah. So, you've got Docker data center as well? Yes? No, no, we don't have Docker data center. Like we put everything in our AWS infrastructure. Like uh, database is just maybe RDS instance or whatever, it's just out of the container. Yeah. Yeah. What, what were you using as a registry in terms of images? Ah, uh, we use Docker Hub. Docker Hub. We're probably thinking of migrating to ECS like in the, in the near future, but currently Docker Hub. Any final questions for Yufe and Till? I think that's it. Please jump Thank in. You. Thank you, Yufe and Till.